Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the very beginning of your sunset safari. But right now, the sun is extremely high in the sky, and it is a sweltering hot day here in Juma Private Game Reserve. Whew! These impalas are doing exactly what the people in the vehicle are doing, and that is seeking some shade, some relief from that sun. We always complain about the weather. It is what we do here at Safari Live. But good afternoon. My name is Lauren, and I do have Olaf on camera, and we are going to start with the usual suspects, and they are the impala. If we didn't have the impala, we would be very, very sad. Oh, we have a joke here. Alora. What does an elephant wear to a pool party? Oh, I knew it. I knew it. They wear their swimming trunks. Ha ha ha. Nice dad joke you got there. They do wear their swimming trunks. <laughs> And now I'm actually imagining an elephant in trunks, literally trunks. Thank you, Alora. But talking of pool parties, I just don't think it's going to happen. And Nicole there is asking, are lions the most social of the big cats? Nicole, the quick answer is yes. They are the most social. In fact, they are the only true social cat. The only other cat that forms or exhibits some form of social behavior in terms of groups is male cheetahs who also forms coalitions, like the Three Amigos. But other than that, all other cats are solitary by nature. So lions are the true, only true social cat. So not only are they more social than other cats, they are the only true social cat. With the exception of cheetah males. Cheetah females are also solitary. A predator with a kill on this side that looks a little bit strange, let me tell you. So we've got a black back jackal. There are a few others that are trying to come in and steal the kill from this one. And we were really confused at first. We thought that maybe that was a a plastic bag or something but actually on closer inspection it's a piece of skin that this jackal's chewing on and we don't know where they got the skin from because they weren't here with it earlier and we came past to go to the cheetahs so i don't know if they maybe found this somewhere and maybe this is part of the kill that the cheetahs had that they didn't finish and the jackals now that it's cooled down and getting later in the day they've woken up a bit early and are picking up bits and pieces because they are all over this area so I can only imagine this was leftovers from a meal but there are two other jackals waiting here one doesn't seem very interested the other one definitely does it keeps looking over longingly wanting to steal some of it or at least share some oh it's coming in it looks quite a bit smaller and it's definitely lighter I wonder if this is maybe a pup from a previous litter stuck around looking for some scraps look what we found we found some tracks heading towards this pan system and I was quite keen to talk about this pan system here on this road in the middle of Juma called the Pangolin Track it's got a lovely number of of wetland spots and when it comes to little muddy wallows like this they are instrumental in the livelihood of rhinos and they actually form part of territorial males territories as if he has a number of these muddy wallows he will attract females like this one to come through 
for the health spa benefits that the mud provides. Now the mud itself is accumulated at the bottom of the landscape as we discussed before and that gives rise to these wallows that will actually stay in place, the mud themselves and the water, for some time depending on the rainy season and will service a number of animals such as warthog, buffalo, rhino and elephant. Well, hello there. We did some loops and some juggles and uh, came all the way around. Anticipated getting in front of him and he ended up back on the road. He is not the most relaxed male there, but he's going to go in there. Wati, the dominant male leopard of this area. Well, we found him again. He's scent marking, scratching, urinating, and he prefers to be followed than to be in front of him. So he hasn't changed his course much. I think what he did is he just hid in the bushes until we moved away and then he came back onto the road. But now he can smell something. We are in the infrared now. Giving him lots of space. Let's move up a bit, maybe we'll be able to see. We lose him very quickly in this undergrowth. Standing by on the top of quarantine with imminent arrival, we hope, of Mawati. But uh, there's a hyena over there, Darby. Yeah, Darby should have the hyena entering frame in a moment. There we go. Who are you? Sorry about the pole. Oh, you're going to stop right there, are you? I can smell the leopard. It's been a pleasure to show you Moati and Chris with uh, some lion's tests with some cheetah, of course. Splendid to be out and about. Feline Friday. Feline Friday, everybody. Well, we do thank you for joining us this afternoon on the Sunset Safari. It's been wonderful hosting you out, doing all things ecology from my side. Uh, we will be seeing you once again bright and early tomorrow morning where all things wild and wonderful will be happening. Who knows who will be knocking on our door tomorrow morning and what we'll be finding. But until then, everyone, have a wonderful evening. Good night from us and goodbye.